Can you hear me now? Thank you, Mr. Haney. Oh, I bet that's Mr. Martinez. Yes, sir. Welcome. Welcome. Do you have a copy of the agenda and a copy of the minutes? Here's the agenda. No, Can we have another copy of the minutes from Mr. Martinez, please? You've got one. All right. I sent the agenda out uh, last week. I would, uh, I would ask for everybody uh, to look at it, and do I hear a motion for the approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. Moved and second. Uh, any objection to the approval of the agenda, please signify by saying nay. That being the case, unanimous vote for the agenda. The agenda is approved. Uh, you should have your minutes uh, for the March 2021 gathering that we had. Uh, those have been dutifully prepared uh, by Ms. Kendra, and we appreciate her hard work and diligent application. Uh, do I hear a motion that the minutes for the March 2021 meeting be approved as submitted? So moved. Second. moved and second. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Mr. Avila. Uh, all those in favor of the minutes, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone, anyone uh, don't approve? Ayes have it. Unanimous vote for the approval of the minutes. Um, let, me, let me welcome uh, everybody here. Uh, all commission members are here. Uh, my name is Paul Summers. Uh, let me tell you how I got involved in this uh, commission. After I read in the paper about the commission being formed, uh, I, having been a public servant for well over 30 years, I knew how oftentimes we didn't get many compliments, so I, I found out that Bob Mendez was the sponsor of a resolution and, uh, uh, for the uh, Special Bombing Commission, so I sent him an email, and I said, Bob, who's been a friend of mine, I said, Bob, I'm proud of what you're doing. I think it's as good. I think it needs to be transparent. A lot of people have questions, and that's a good thing you're doing. Well, he sent me an email back, and he said, thank you very much. I really appreciate that, Paul. And, of course, the next thing you know, I get a, letter, a phone call from Ms. Falls in the mayor's office and want to know would I be interested in being on that commission. And so I know where that came from. It probably came from Bob Mendez. But at any rate. I'm, I'm pleased to be on, on the commission. Uh, I'm at that stage in my life, having been very blessed uh, as uh, 30 years in the military, four years active duty, and 26 years in the Army National Guard in Tennessee, and then I've served in just about every capacity as a judge, a criminal judge uh, in, in the state of Tennessee, both at the appellate level and the trial level. I've participated in investigations. I've tried murder cases, both prosecution and defense. I've done it all. I also have been the state attorney general for an eight-year term. But I'm at that age and stage that if it's transparent, if it's the truth, and if it's time well spent, that's what I told Ms. Falls, I'll be happy to participate. And so I intend uh, for this to be time well spent, to be transparent, and to be the truth. Uh, what I would like to do now before we ratify any decisions that we made in the March meeting, I would like to go around the room, and by the way, I, I really mean that about time well spent, and so this meeting may last a little bit longer than, than most meetings, probably because we're getting organized and learning to meet each other, uh, and so, but uh, I promise you that we won't waste time in these meetings. Uh, I would like to go around, and I'll just do it in alphabetical order, for you to briefly introduce yourself. Uh, tell us, uh, 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 tell us what you do, what you bring to the, what you bring to the table of this, uh, of this meeting, and uh, also tell us uh, of any other organizations. I know that some, some of the members of the commission are involved in other study commissions. I want to make sure we don't overlap. Please explain what you're doing, and I'll start, please, with uh, uh, Commissioner Avila. 
And before you speak, make sure you turn your microphone on. It's the button on the right-hand side. There we go. Is that it? Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Mario Avila. I am currently the director of the Turner Family Center for Social Ventures at Vanderbilt University's Business School. Um, in that role, I support graduate students across eight graduate schools at Vanderbilt. Um, outside of that, I, I serve on various boards in the city, um, just got off the executive board at Conexión Américas, uh, supporting our Latino um, communities. I'm also the chairman of the credit union at our university um, and the National Food Project. Um, the, the reason um, I think why I was asked to, to join this commission by Jim Shulman was that intersection of businesses, both for-profit and non-profit um, in our community, as well as our transient um, residents being students, especially graduate students that are here for two years and are very active uh, in our community and trying to understand where they're gonna, where they're gonna land after their time at Vanderbilt. Um, I think it's important to, to do that. And I think that's the lens that I also bring to this is the ability to look at how transient residents interact with the city and their involvement within our community and politics. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Avila. Councilwoman Gamble. Uh, bottom right. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. I'm Councilwoman Jennifer Gamble, representing District 3 in Nashville. I am also serve as the public safety chair for the Metro Council, and in that role, I've been uh, appointed to this commission, as well as the uh, Metro Police's after action review, uh, which is wrapping up. We'll actually be presenting a final report of that review that started earlier this year, I believe it was January. Uh, we'll wrap, be wrapping that up in the next couple of weeks. And, and that primarily focuses on the uh, le events leading up to the bombing. So we did not uh, investigate or look at anything that happened from the time the bombing happened for, uh, on, just what happened before events that led up and, and if there are any policies or procedures that can be put in place that would avoid uh, a similar situation in the future. So as I said, that report will be coming out soon. Um, I, this is my first term to the Metro Council. I am a public relations professional and I bring the perspective of uh, community and public relations to this committee as well as the after action review committee and looking at how we can make the public feel more secure and safe and, 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 and make them feel that this process is transparent and answers the questions that our chairman said earlier. So I'll bring that perspective uh, to the group. Thank you, Councilwoman. Former Councilman Jamie Holland, a member of our, of our commission. My name is Jamie Holland. I'm an attorney here in Nashville. And Chairman Summers, just so you know, whenever the media records me as a former member of the Metro Council, I remind everybody that I bag groceries at Piggly Wiggly in Adamsville, Tennessee for a longer period of time than I served on the Metro Council. Uh, but I sue Metro a lot on behalf of clients. I've luckily got a conflict waiver on that, so nothing I'm doing here today is gonna prohibit me from doing that in the future. And just here to serve, it's your pleasure, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holland. Mr. Andre Martinez. Hi, Andres Martinez, um, Director of Policy and Communications at Conexión Américas, as Mario mentioned, a uh, nonprofit here in Nashville serving Tennessee's Latino immigrant community. Um, serving here as a uh, representative of the Community Oversight Board, which I chair, uh, and working in conjunction with our ex the COB's Executive Director, who is uh, also on the MNPD uh, Commission reviewing the bombing as well. Thank you, sir. Captain LaShawn Oliver. Yes, my name is LaShawn Oliver. I'm Captain Vanderbilt University Public Safety. I've been in law enforcement for over 16 years, and um, I currently 
work at Vanderbilt, as I stated, and been there for 10, and we've lived in Nashville since uh, moving here and relocating uh, 10 years ago. I believe um, also over the summer into the fall served on the Metro Nashville Police Department's policy um, uh, review committee and whatnot. And so I believe what I bring to the table is that expertise when it comes to um, law enforcement as a first responder uh, trained in emergency preparedness and looking at the after action on how do we improve our services to our community members and provide a safer environment, what we did well, uh, and as I stated, what we could do better going forward. So I wanna bring that perspective to the table and make sure I'm non-biased, but yet questioning and learning and seeing how that we um, move forward from here after the fact the bombing happened, what did we do to get people to safety, so. Thank you, Captain. Next, uh, I will call her uh, investigator, Quinn. Thank you, uh, my name is Margie Quinn, and um, I'm currently the CEO at End to Slavery Tennessee, a direct service nonprofit to victims of human trafficking in Middle Tennessee. Um, I am a retired law enforcement officer um, as well with 26 years in law enforcement and retired from the TBI in 2018. Um, I also served on the, the Mayor's Policing Commission last fall and chaired the Workforce Committee. Um, but I suspect that my expertise in emergency response and preparedness um, analysis of critical infrastructure um, is probably going to be uh, my, my contribution to this, um, this commission work. I served for 11 years as the assistant special agent in charge in the Tennessee State Fusion Center. I was an emergency services coordinator um, at TEMA for those 11 years. And so that's, that's what I hope to bring to the commission. Thank you, investigator. Now my, my former neighbor, Brenda Sanderson from Howell Park on 2nd Avenue South. Ooh, that was a long time ago. My name is Brenda Sanderson. Um, my husband and son and other members of our family are part of a family-owned uh, business on, on Broadway in downtown Nashville called Broadway Entertainment. And also we are property owners downtown and we uh, are also residents of downtown Nashville. Uh, I've been involved in the businesses down there for over 25 years, so I think what I may bring to the table uh, is a knowledge of working with a lot of groups of people, whether it was uh, Metro Police, Metro Fire Department, other, other departments in this city. I have a, a long time relationship of working with them and hopefully, um, uh, that will give us some insight into how we move forward. And um, I'd like to think that we're here to help and to uh, think that things in the future will uh, improve by something that we have uncovered here and that we're just not on a witch hunt. That is not what I want to do, but I want to help the entities that all were responders in this uh, horrible episode that just broke our hearts. Thank you so much, uh, Brenda Sanderson. And finally, uh, Mr. Darrell Tal Talbert, who's president of Icon Entertainment, and we would welcome your comments and what do you think about this commission and what our goals are? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as mentioned, I'm Darrell Talbert. I'm the president of Icon Entertainment. We're a family-owned business with a pretty significant footprint in and around downtown and near the bomb site, actually. Um, our brands include Skull's Rainbow Room, House of Cards, Johnny Cash Museum, Nudies, Johnny Cash Kitchen and Saloon, Patsy Cline, and, and some others that are coming still. Um, additionally, I have almost 30 years experience in municipal government at different levels. I've served as, um, for over 12 years as an elected official and also another uh, almost 12 years in the technical capacity as a staffer. So I think I bring to the table for this conversation um, the ability to understand from a management perspective the role of a first responder um, and everything that goes into the decisions that we make as elected officials and technical advisors in management in terms of how to respond to the community, how to create transparency, how to create um, an environment where conversations can be had 
while understanding the needs of first responders and not everything that goes on the public can know. It, it's just the reality of it. So hopefully I'll bring balance to, to that part of the conversation, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Talbot. After the first meeting, I got a phone call from Jamie Holland, my colleague to my left. I think at least one of the two lawyers on this commission, there may be some more on here if you want to admit it, but uh, uh, Jamie Holland. And then uh, uh, after that, I got uh, a an email from Mr. Holland that had about a dozen questions on it, primarily about our first meeting and so on and so forth. So I realized early on, I'd already realized it, but uh, I had some questions as well. But I said, we need some legal counsel. We need, we need a lawyer to give us some advice about running this commission correctly. And I know that uh, a lawyer who represents himself or herself has a fool for a client. And I don't expect to be that fool. So I called my friend and also former Attorney General, Bob Cooper, who's the head of the law department. And uh, the bottom line is after uh, several conversations and a lot of uh, uh, legal maneuvering, uh, he assigned uh, uh, Ms. Cindy Gross as our legal counsel for this particular commission. And it's my pleasure to, uh, 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 in just a minute before we vote, to uh, turn the floor over to Ms. Gross to answer those questions that Mr. Holland had and that also I had. But what I have discerned from my many conversations with Ms. Gross and with Mr. Holland is that our rules are fairly flexible. The resolution that created this commission give us the flexibility. And in my opinion, um, uh, I think we, well, not only in my opinion, but also the opinion of our lawyer, we need to follow the Public Records Act. And we have publicly announced this meeting. We have, uh, uh, we've announced it, uh, uh, we've announced the agenda publicly. And uh, uh, we have dotted all the I's to my knowledge and crossed all the T's. But what I would like to do is I would like to, we may only made two decisions in the last meeting in March. One was to elect a chairman and then also to set the meetings. That was the only substance that we even accomplished. And at this time, I would like to uh, entertain a motion for ratification of the election of chairman, or for that matter, if you want, don't like that, if you have a new election, but do I hear uh, a motion from anyone to ratify the decision we made last session. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. To ratify, is that correct? Is that right, Mr. Holland? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, motion been made and second to ratify the decision to elect Paul Summers as the chairman of this commission. All those in favor of such ratification, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous vote. I would also just state for the purposes of the record, if my memory serves me correctly, at the last meeting we had several people attending either virtually or in attendance, and that vote was seven to zero as well. Next, uh, the, media, the, the other substantive decision that we made at the last meeting was to have monthly meetings at, on the fourth Tuesday of every month. Uh, and I'm assuming now, based on the conversations I have with Ms. Groth, they would be here at the Howard Office Building Complex uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning. And that will be the plan. If it's not available, we'll of course give you plenty of notice, but that would be the plan okay. that it would be here. 10 o'clock, fourth Monday, uh, of, of every month, uh, Central Standard Time. Do I hear a motion to ratify that decision? A uh, motion by Mr. Holland and second by... Motion has been made and second to ratify our decision as to meeting times. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Unanimous vote on that as well. To the best of my knowledge and belief, uh, lawyer, 
those are the only two substantive decisions we made, although we had a great presentation from the chief, but th th those are the only decisions we made, and I think we've complied with the open meetings law. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Now, I want, at this time, I would like to turn it over to our lawyer, uh, Ms. Gross, uh, who will not only answer the questions posited to her by at least two members of the commission, but also tell us what our duties are. And I would really appreciate you giving us some advice on uh, the purpose based on the resolution of this commission. And also address, please, any overlap with other, with other commissions that there might be. Go ahead. Sure, so again, my name's Cindy Gross. I'm an attorney with the Metropolitan Government Department of Law. I have worked with the Department of Law for 15 years, and um, I currently am the senior attorney or the lead attorney for the public safety uh, team. So I give client advice and represent the fire department, the police department, sheriff's office, um, the general sessions court judges, criminal court clerk, um, Department of Emergency Communications, many others, but those type of groups um, that they fall under my team. Um, I'm going to be attending all your meetings and providing you legal advice, and if I do have a conflict, another attorney from our office will be here to help you. So as Mr. Summers was saying, this commission is subject to the Open Meetings Act. You're probably familiar with the general policy and state law in Tennessee that uh, public bodies meet um, openly for transparency and the public are welcome to attend. That law does apply here to this commission um, because this commission was created by the council through legislation and it is tasked with, you know, suggesting policy and making recommendations to a governing body, the council. So since we are subject to the Open Meetings Act, Commission members need to only be discussing commission business during this meeting. So that's just something to keep in mind. I know there's going to be emails that are just informative of here's the agenda or here's where we're meeting, but um, we're not gonna reply all and start discussing any items um, except you know we're only gonna discuss them here during the meetings. So to assist you all, the Metro Council Office is going to um, serve as kind of staff to this commission going forward to do all those logistics tasks. Make sure the room's reserved. We'll let you know if there's a conflict and we need to meet somewhere else. Um, make sure that you know the Metro Nashville Network is set up to record our meetings and live stream them. They will publish the agendas for our meetings going forward um, and uh, you know any other documents that we need to publish. So at this point or in this meeting, um, you'll see on the agenda, there's a discussion of um, approval of a position of secretary and an election of that position. So if you all decide to create the position of secretary and vote to um, elect a certain person, that person will serve an important role of taking minutes for each meeting. And then those minutes will be published um, and made available through the Metro Clerk's Office. So they'll be filed with the Metro Clerk as an official document. So attendance at the commission meetings as of today and going forward is going to be in person. You're probably aware that for the last year, the governor had signed an executive order allowing virtual commission board meetings, but that expires as of tomorrow. So, um, and going forward, we're going to be in person. Okay, so as far as procedurally, you guys are already doing an amazing job with Robert's Rules of Orders and motions and seconds, but they do apply unless the commission chooses another rule, adopts another rule. So again, it's just, um, we'll have a quorum, which would be a simple majority of the commission members, and then the majority of the people here, if they vote, then the motion passes. So now as far as getting to Mr. Summers' question today about the purpose and mission of the commission, you are guided by the ordinance itself. I mean, that's really the only document we have. We have the legislation that was filed, that created the commission, that set forth your mission. So again, it said in the ordinance, the purpose of the commission is to review and investigate the circumstances surrounding the suicide bombing in Nashville on December 25th, 2020. 
to make recommendations regarding possible improvements, procedures, and policy changes to reduce the likelihood of another bombing in Nashville and to improve the city's response to similar emergencies in the future. So that is your guiding document. And so any sort of you know reasonable interpretation of that section and that wording is what you all are tasked with doing. Um, as far as I think it was already discussed um, about this separate committee, the After Action Review Committee um, that you, you stated you're a member of and um, the council member, and that you guys looked at kind of everything leading up to the bombing. I think a logical interpretation based on that work, so it's not duplicative, and also the language in the ordinance itself is to look at the bombing itself and everything that happened that day and going forward as a response. Um, but again, it's up to y'all to read that uh, language and come up with a reasonable conclusion about you know your purpose and mission, mission going forward here. Um, so we, there was the Open Meetings Act, like we said, applies. There's also the Public Records Act. So are you probably familiar with the basic default in state law is government records about government business are public and open to the public. So that would very clearly apply here. So our written communications to each other, emails, et cetera, our um, agendas, minutes, any discussion, all of that is public record. The report that you ultimately come up with, the policy recommendations, the documents you look at are going to be public records. So the only thing I want to mention on that is the public records is very broad, but there's also a long statute that, lets, um, that lists exceptions to the Public Records Act, makes things specifically confidential under state law. The only records right now that I could see potentially implicated here that are confidential are contingency plans. So there is a specific part of the Public Records Act that says contingency plans of law enforcement are confidential. So just so you know that, um, that being said, there may be a portion of contingency plans that you know the police department or um, the fire department or the FBI, et cetera, feel like you all can look at and it wouldn't be problematic to disclose, but that is something that's specifically confidential under state law and that you would in general not be able to look at or discuss. But everything else, I think what's good is my understanding is the investigation of the FBI who were the lead officers in investigating this bombing. My understanding is they have concluded that investigation. Um, and so that would be good as far as while things are being investigated, it's confidential. But at this point, my understanding is, is that it has been resolved and so you should be able to get those records, which is, which is helpful. I think the only other kind of question that I received was about subpoena power. So if you recall in the ordinance that established this commission, it specifically says you are allowed to, but not required to, you know, have hearings um, and compel witnesses to um, testify or produce documents, um, and that you can use the subpoena power that is um, established through the Metro Charter that applies to council and to boards and commissions. So that is something that's available to you. Um, I, I think that's all my questions are the questions that I had received in anticipation of this meeting. So hopefully that overview helps you. I'm happy to answer any questions. It, it, it has. I would like to open it up to members of the commission if they have questions that you haven't addressed. Questions of any member of the commission to our lawyer. Mr. Hall. Did that last meeting happen? Yes, you had a meeting. Whether it complied with the Open Meetings Act <laughs> is, is uh, questionable, but Mr. Summers has cured that. So it is, if there is a potential procedural violation with an Open Meetings um, Act you know, matter, you can cure that by, at the next meeting, taking action to ratify the same vote. You normally would discuss it in the same manner. Um, my understanding is it was 
uh, in, you know, a vote and an approval. So we did essentially the same thing as we did in March. And so now that is cured. And going forward again, we're going to provide notice to the public and it is, they will be open. We got some medicine for our hiccup, so I'm satisfied, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> That's great. Very well. Here are some practical questions. <clears throat> We've got at least one, maybe two more commissions or review committees or something, primarily of a public nature, that are looking at this bombing. Uh, Councilwoman Gamble sits on one of them, and she has already told us that, they're go that they are going from the up to the bombing, which that has a lot, a lot of people have a lot of questions about that. Uh, I would assume that probably goes back, I'm assuming it goes back several, uh, August 19, 2019. When, when the first complaint was made by a girlfriend or something of that nature. Right. right. Okay. So basically that, that commission is, is, is going to uh, uh, render a, a report and uh, then there may be some other commissions that are working on things. Can some, can, do you know of other commissions that are working on, on this particular issue? I do not. Okay. Well, it seems that we need to get a copy of that report, which I'm assuming will be a public record. Uh, uh, and <clears throat> the question I have is, I know that uh, the Office of Emergency Management and a lot of the responders, the FBI, for example, uh, they're going to all issue reports on what they did after action reports. And I kind of need to know what a time frame is because I need to know what they say before we can decide whether or not we're going to be duplicating things or whether we're going to be going into uncharted territory. I need to know. So maybe I'm asking that question of you and maybe also of the chief as well. And when uh, board, when given the opportunity, I think I'm next on the agenda, I probably can bring some clarity to that. Unless you want me to segue and do it right now, segue me into that. I asked the question, go ahead and do okay. it right now if you don't mind. Yes, well, well basically first, um, I wanted to thank uh, uh, the, the, the board members, every one of you guys, for actually um, moving forward to, to actually take a chance to, to come out to actually show everyone what we do in this city. I think the after action review will be something that will not as a criticism or not to try to find something right or, or wrong, but it's going to really show the public that live here, visit here, residents or, or, or um, whomever, uh, the great work uh, that that it takes to run a city. And then when it comes to responders, all the, the great work that they've done. So what we are proposing to the board and of course my I'm chief swan with the office of emergency management and of course the the, the fire chief of nashville uh, so i've served several different roles in in this capacity my role is to sort of be as a liaison uh, for the committee uh, i will work directly with each agency that responded to the bombing and then also making sure that the after action review that we asked for i'm gonna move up here so it, I'll be in order. There you go. You just got to push a button. So again, so um, um, putting together uh, from my role and my team's role is to put together uh, and get things organized so that the committee will be able to uh, in a timely manner, uh, get their after action reviews so you guys can evaluate it, look at it, ask any questions of it, and hopefully the after action itself, the review that you have in paper format or the format that we laid before you last meeting, it will pretty much be self-explanatory. But as I stated last uh, meeting, we will, you'll be also given the opportunity 
uh, if you want to bring in a certain agency in, let's just use the fire department, maybe you look at our after action review and it leaves you with a lot of unanswered questions, then we will have a representative from each one of those uh, agency come in and do an oral presentation for, from you, uh, for you, and that way you can ask questions and they will be able to give you uh, a better answer that was not laid out in, in that after action. But keep in mind, as uh, our Cindy Gross actually uh, laid out, there will be um, particular with, with you know, fire, police, and maybe uh, some of the other agencies, our federal agency, there may be some information that they cannot lay out before the committee, but I'm sure you guys will understand that. Um, so since you pulled me in this position, I, I want to take the opportunity just to say how proud I am of each one of you guys. When I looked at the committee, uh, Mr. Summers and I, we, we, we actually looked at it, and we were trying to um, uh, look at the, the vastness of it. I mean, we have everybody here from former council members. We have uh, 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 lawyers, uh, and, uh, and then we have a former mayor. We have uh, business owners. We have responders. Uh, and so you guys are, are really the ideal committee to really be able to evaluate um, what is going on on every perspective. And then we have our uh, definitely when we start talking about the, com the community of Nashville, uh, we have uh, a vastness. It's like a melting pot. We have every different nationality, different uh, organizations within Nashville. So I'm glad to see that we have board members, that, again, that's inverse with different um, um, uh, minorities and, 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 and others. So I just want to, again, say thank you guys for that. This, this would be a great committee. So the After Action Review Committee, and I, I, I want to make sure that I have the opportunity to say this, Ms. Gamble will bring about some of the unclarity um, bring about some some really stability because she sat on the uh, the pre-bombing uh, board. So and, and that will be made public. But I'm sure she can bring if if the chair wants that they can bring the what happened before. But this committee is basically set up for the bombing happen now. The response of all the uh, uh, agencies, how they responded. We know what after action does. What it does, it tells you what happened how it affected the city, how it affected your individual agency, what things you did well, what things you did bad, and then more importantly, what things have you done since then to set things in motion that if we have it again, we'd be better for it. Um, so looking at the timeline, which I'm getting now to that question. Um, so what we were hoping is uh, by your next meeting in May, we will actually have the timeline from each agency. And this timeline is critical. If you remember the outline that I gave you last time, each agency will have to produce, uh, again, like a SWOT analysis, analogy, but it will show their timeline from the time they were actively involved with that bombing. So um, Kendra and Joseph, uh, and especially Kendra from, um, from the fire department, she will be uh, playing a big role with helping to organize all the information that comes in so that when we do um, submit it to the chair, it will already be laid out and then you guys will be able to look at it. So by next meeting in May, you should have the timeline of each agency that participated. So you'll see where they came in and uh, um, what exactly from the time they faded in to the time they faded out. And then we're hoping uh, by June, We'll start having several of the after action reviews for you guys to start looking at uh, because we don't want to inundate you with everybody at one time. Now, if we get more before June, Chair, we will actually submit that to you. We already have the Office of Emergency Management. Uh, it's complete. Their whole thing is complete. And, and you would expect that because that's what, you know, in, in that field, we, we sort of make sure that we keep everybody on top of doing that after action review. So that's already done. But... To keep in order, next meeting you'll have the timeline. Uh, by June, by June you should start having uh, uh, um, you should start having several of the after action reviews committed, um, and then hopefully uh, 
uh, July, we're hoping to actually have everything that you need and it should be complete as far as all the after action reviews. And then from there, Chair, of course, it'll be up to you to then uh, in the committee to uh, hopefully by that time have had a great idea of what you expect from each agency or what, how, it, how their response were. And then you can start targeting, uh, well, that's not a good word. Um, you will start really reviewing each one of those and maybe ones that you want to come in to get a little bit more insight on. If we wanted like AT&T or fire department, police department or uh, office of emergency management, uh, our federal partners. But I assure you, everybody's on board with, we've, we had a meeting um, uh, and I spoke with each uh, representative from each agency, and they're all uh, understand their role in this, and, and they're very eager to actually uh, show their worth because that's what an after action does. It shows the worth of each agency, and then it allow our citizens and visitors and residents to sleep well at night, knowing that we just don't uh, sh go off the hip. We have a plan in place to, to try to handle any situation that we're faced with. Chief, let me ask you, when you talk about uh, your agencies and the after action reports, give me, give us an example of all those agencies. Um, let me see here. Do we have that? Give me one second here. I have Kendra will share that with you. Um, I'm going to let her, she'll come up and actually can give you that, but uh, as you can imagine, um, when you talk about the infrastructure of Nashville, uh, the, the local agencies from fire, police, OEM, um, but the bigger part of that is just how well uh, these agencies work together. Remember, when the federal partners came in, they could have put a fence around this downtown and said, hey, you guys stay out and we'll let you know when you can come in. That didn't happen. It didn't happen because we have a great relationship. Uh, when we talk about TEMA, FEMA, uh, we talk about FBI partners, our federal partners, we have a great relationship. So what we were able to do was we were inside the boundaries working as liaisons closely with our federal partners. And because of that, it sped the process up. Um, we learned a lot, and I'm sure they learned a lot about each other, which really just makes us stronger. So I'm going to let Kendra, again, she's one of my public information officers who will be working closely with the committee to format all the information come in. She can give you a, a better idea of all the agencies that will be involved. One more question before you sit down. Okay. What about the feds? Would, will we be entitled to their copy of, the, of their report, and about when would that be? They're on the same timeline that everyone else in, uh, uh, Chairman. They are just like we are. They're very an anticipating to complete everything in the timeline that we've given them, and they're on board with sharing the information that they can. That's both the FBI and any other federal agency, Absolutely. ATF and all the rest of them. Anybody that's, that she's going to name, they will be a, uh, they play a role. And then I think last time I learned from the, from the chair and, and, and others about some parties that we didn't put in place um, um, that we've actually added to it because we weren't thinking at that level. So everybody that she's mentioned will mention will play a will play a part, and they're all anticipating uh, uh, to be able to present it. And if you call them to come here to give their part, again, keeping in mind they will share with you what they can. If they can't share it, then you'll understand that's just because it's vital information that cannot be put out to the public. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kendra. Before before Miss uh, Miss Loney speaks, let me just brag on her just a minute. Uh, she has been our recording secretary and been doing all of the hard work that we've asked her to do for the last month and a half. And I want to tell you how much we appreciate what you've done, and we thank you. I know you've gone over and beyond the call of duty. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, this, the list of the agencies are actually the list that was presented during the first meeting um, on the draft of the after action report. Those agencies include the mayor's office, the office of emergency management, National Fire Department and the EMS division, AT&T, uh, NES, Piedmont, Department of Emergency Communications, Metro Police Department, ITS, Metro Codes, Public Works, Metro Water Services, Parks, Metro Finance, Metro General Services, HCA and our hospital partners, Nissan Stadium, BNA, FAA, our judicial partners, the FBI, TBI, ATF, THP, TEMA, FEMA, 
and then our VOAD, which are our volunteer um, nonprofit organizations, Rehab 55, Hands On Nashville, Community Resource Center, Red Cross, SBA, Downtown Partnership, Downtown Business Owners, and United Way. So far, we have made contact with most all of the metro agencies um, and put them uh, made them aware of the timelines that were presented to you by Chief Swan so that we could have a timeline, an overarching timeline available by the May meeting. Um, in addition to the metro agencies, we have reached out to AT&T and the FBI. Um, we are still working to get in touch with um, THP, TEMA, and FEMA, um, but we anticipate being able to have those responses as well. You may get a... Um, you may get a draft version of that timeline in the May meeting just to have something to review. And then as we get additional information from other agencies, we'll be able to add those in as a final timeline. And that's gonna be the same thing for the narratives that you all receive um, because some of the agencies uh, will be unable to meet the timelines that we presented and we wanna work with them so that we can keep a cooperative line open um, and just be able to get all the information that you all need. Thank you. I would I would ask you that as soon as the timelines come in, the draft after action reports come in, the after action reviews come in, to please uh, send a PDF, since it's all going to be public record. No, they're obviously not going to be confidential. Send it to, not only to me at my two email addresses, but also to whoever we elect as the recording secretary. Yes, sir. And. Uh, and then it sounds to me like, and I am so grat gratified that, that the, 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 the feds, the ATF, the ATF, the FBI, the other federal partners are part of our whole concept of this timeline. And, and I'm really glad that you added the judiciary as well, because uh, there, there are, and, and there may be some partners out there of which this commission is unaware that were affected by this. Um, that we haven't listed. If so, please pass that on to uh, Ms. Loney, and we'll add that to the list. Thank you. Well organized. Appreciate Thank it. You. Uh, so as I understand it, Chief, uh, all that list of departments, both state, metro, and federal, are all operating under the same rules. They're going to have a timeline, they're going to have a draft after action report, and then a final after action report, and they're all cooperating, and eventually they will all get to us. So what we need to do is we need to study whatever you send us or Ms. Loney sends us uh, by email at our next meeting, and then after we finally get all those after action reports, we then will be able to determine what questions we have left that we might need to call and investigate. Is that a fair, is that a fair assumption of where we are, folks? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think um, uh, you're absolutely right. I, I, and I would hope that the board, uh, the committee, would find that, um, again, the, the partnership is the thing that I'm really, um, would, if I brag about anything, uh, it would be just our strong partnership, um, not just with the infrastructure, but with our federal partners and, uh, again, our team of FEMA partners. We have a strong, I mean, Nashville, uh, with the, all the events that's happened in 2020, um, and, and I've been with the department going on 26 years, um, and we've always uh, reached beyond our borders, but uh, this year, uh, past year, what it has done, uh, you know, what they say, don't kill you, make you stronger. Uh, it really showed our partnership, our resiliency of the city, and how well we work together with all of our partners. And um, in, in the municipalities of Davidson County, we don't struggle so much with other, um, uh, like some other counties or cities that you may know of. So uh, I was just very impressed with that, and even with our federal partners. So you'll find them to be really team players and eager, again, to uh, participate in this. So I'm uh, very excited over that. Thank you, Chief. Uh, do you have any further report? No, again, I just want to thank everyone, and uh, I will um, stay in my place with the with the with the committee. I'll, I'm just here to, to serve again as a liaison and, and keep things uh, uh, in perspective. And and hopefully, if there's something I can't answer that's in a general 
format, I'll be able to do that. But again, thank you guys uh, for being here, and I'll do my job, I promise you. I know you will. Ms. Gross, do you have anything further? No, sir. Thank you. Uh, the rules uh, give us broad latitude on, on the resolution gives us broad latitude on, on uh, developing our own rules. Ms. Gross has already alluded to some of those. Uh, <clears throat> I think the most important office that one can elect for a commission like this is recording secretary because the recording secretary will be in charge not only of minutes, and that they are filed, approved, and then filed, but also of any addendums or addenda to those minutes. As well, the recording secretary uh, needs to make sure that everything is accurate and that it is filed. And so uh, I, would like to, I would like to entertain a motion that we have a position of recording secretary to the to the Special Bombing Review Commission. Do I hear such a motion? Mr. Chair, I'd like to move that we nominate um, Margie Quinn. Well, let's do it one step at a time. Let's, okay. let's create the position first. That's great, then. Um, <laughs> I'd like to move that we establish a recording chair for our commission. Thank you. Second? Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded uh, uh, that we have a recording secretary for this Special Bombing Commission. All those in favor of creating that position signify by saying aye, please. Aye. Any no's? We have created the position of recording secretary. Now, I would like to entertain uh, any motions for the position of recording secretary, which will be a hard task, but a very, very important task. Any motions? Mr. Chair, I'd like to motion um, that we nominate Margie Quinn for the position of recording secretary for our Margie commission. Quinn's been nominated as a second? Yes, sir. Yes. In, any, other, any other nominations? Do I hear a motion that nominations cease? Any objections that nominations cease? There being none, the only person on the ballot will be Margie Quinn. All those in favor of Investigator Margie Quinn being the recording secretary for the Special Bombing Review Commission signify by saying aye. 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 Any no's? Unanimous vote? Thank you. Now, Ms. Kendra, we have a recording secretary. Aye. And you can... <laughs> <laughs> and now, and, and, and she will be responsible for the minutes of this meeting, and you can turn all of your records over to her. And she will also be the person, besides me and my two email addresses, to send the timeline, the draft of the after action reports, the after action reports. I want them to send them both to her. Then I probably then going to ask her to send those to the rest of the commission. Okay? And you've got her information. Thank you. Congratulations, Miss Quinn. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> Next, uh, uh, I plan to be here at every meeting, but you can't ever tell. Something might happen. And uh, if I'm not here at the meeting to chair the meeting, uh, if I hadn't done the agenda, then I think we need to uh, have a vice chair. And so, uh, uh, do I hear a motion that we establish a position of vice chair for the commission? Chair. I motion to nominate Mr. Jamie Holland as our vice chair. Let's create the position first. Oh, okay. <laughs> do, you, do you move, do I you move, move to create, to create the, position? the position of a vice chair for the commission? Uh, is there a second? All those in favor of creating a position of vice chair of the Special Bombing Review Commission signify by saying aye. Aye. Any no's? Ayes have it. Unanimous vote. Uh, there will be a position of vice chair to the Special Bombing Review Commission. Let's uh, nominate. I have nominations. Do I hear a nomination for vice chair of the Bombing Review Commission? Mr. Chair. I'd like to nominate Mr. Jamie Holland as our vice chair of the Bombing Commission. Are there any? Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Second. Uh, any further nominations? There being none, nominations cease. All those in favor of Mr. Jamie Holland 
to be the vice chairman of the Special Bombing Review Commission signify by saying aye. 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 Any no's? Unanimous vote. Congratulations. Thank you for your volunteerism. Don't you miss no me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, as I understand it, where we are today is that all of the partners, state, federal, metro, public and private partners are preparing their timelines and preparing their draft of their after action reports and the chief has given us his solemn oath and obligation that uh, by, by, by next May next May that's next month next, next May that's next month by next month I'm not talking about 13 months from now. I'm talking about next month. That we'll have a timeline for each agency, and then that that timeline hopefully will be presented to, to to the recording secretary and to me that I can share with the, uh, with the commission, and we'll study that. At the next meeting, by June we should have some after action reports, of some so we can really get involved in our substantive work, and then by July that all the after action reports of all of those agencies that Ms. Loney uh, described uh, would be forthcoming and that would give us a whole lot of a, a whole lot of study to do. Now uh, does anybody have any suggestions uh, about that basic format? Basically what we're, we're kind of waiting on them to give us something I think to start but I tell you what I would like for next meeting and it probably would come through you, Chief, is for no more than, say, 20 minutes to have us some videos of what happened. I know you got those somewhere and that there's a public record. Some videos of what happened and to describe what happened. I know that many of us, all of us, have gone up and down 2nd Avenue. I know I did it for a decade, up and down 2nd Avenue, and I never gave it any thought quite frankly, until, <laughs> until after the bombing. And then, so, so there are some of us who probably know about the bomb, who certainly know about the bombing, know about all the hearsay, but we really, we really didn't get a bird's eye view of it. Okay. Could we have a presentation on that next, next month? Uh, yes, I'll, I'll work on that, and that, that shouldn't be um, um, too difficult for me because I'm going to look at someone else to do it. But they're very great at what they do. We'll put something together, and um, and also um, I have another resource, uh, Dennis uh, Costin. He is a, a, a chief in Boston doing the Boston bombing, and I have him as a resource that uh, he would um, agree, I'm sure, if um, maybe to be able to speak a little bit about their after action review. I mean, I can ask him. I'm sure he would be willing to do that as well. Um, so from my perspective, what I will do is look at just putting together a, a, a clip of a, uh, a summary of what happened and uh, of the, the actual bombing here. And maybe I'll get a few people um, that can um, give you a play-by-play -play or something. Uh, I'll, I'll put something together worth uh, viewing. I think it would be very good for everyone. Something we can see on the screen. Yes, hey, we'll do that. Okay. We'll get it done. And then also, again, I will speak to my friend Dennis there in Boston. He's retired now, but uh, he played a very uh, huge role in special ops uh, for, the, um, for the Boston bombing and um, who a good friend. And I'll get with him as well, but I will have that presentation prepared for you uh, next meeting. Thank you. Uh -huh. Which, by the way, will be on the 26th? Tuesday the 26th? Tuesday the 26th. 25th. Our next meeting will be May the 25th. That's a Tuesday. At 10 o'clock, hopefully in this very same room, at 10 o'clock a.m. Central Time, and we really appreciate that. 
Uh, maybe we'll have some timelines to also study, but that sounds like a pretty good agenda for next meeting. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question for the chief, if that's okay. Sure. Um, will the after action reports that we receive from the various agencies also include their recommendations for a change in policy or uh, response? Well, I think, if, did you get the after action review uh, format that we submitted? I'll make sure you get that. But we, as you know, and, and a great question, and you, I can see why you're asking that question, working uh, with Tima, right, the back, I'll, the after action review, again, it does, it will, it should show, uh, again, um, what their recommendation will be moving forward. So it should show that if, uh, Matter of fact, we have the Office of Emergency Management one, so maybe we can send that uh, prior before the uh, May agenda, and that way you have a chance to really look at it. So that way, if there's something on there, guys, that you're thinking, you know, uh, we do these so much so that sometimes it's the little bitty things that we just don't think about. So again, um, by all means, if you see something that you would prefer or would like to see on that, uh, we'll be open to give that suggestion to uh, to everyone. So we'll, we'll do that. How about we can just submit, we'll submit the Office of Emergency Man Management after action review to you guys in the next um, uh, week. They've completed it, uh, but uh, um, let me do a thorough review. And, um, and that way, you can look at it now because it would be great for us to go ahead and set the pace mm -hmm. if there's something that you don't you want to see different because doing an after action review as you guys know it takes time it really takes a lot of time and it's not like you know we've had so many events uh, we've had to put things on pause for for some of these agencies and just have them really focus on this which is not an issue but it's just that um, uh, yeah, from the tornado to the pandemic to the, uh, we've got so many, I think I've numbered now nine events that we've had, uh, but, but um, that's a great question and I'll get that to you and you tell me what else you wanna see on it. Is that Mr. fair? Chairman. Yes, I, I'm, I'm just interested in the assessment on the performance of critical infrastructure after it was attacked. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. As part of that video presentation, just to add context, could we just have a slide or two that, as we set the stage for where we're looking, which is from bombing going forward, um, a Gantt chart, something similar that just shows the timeline and what resources were called in at what time frames. Nothing too complicated, but just kind of micro at the beginning and macro toward the end where we close out the project and the feds turn it back over, just so we have this continuum so we understand that, hey, PD was called, fire was called, they showed up. Then we called water, we called, you know, ju just so we have all the players and when they came to the table would be helpful for me. Right, so, uh, yes, yeah, so we will yeah, that's gonna require some uh, doing to uh, get it accomplished, but again, I think that's appropriate. So we'll, we'll look at, so basically, we put together the, um, the, the actual event itself and then what timelines that we have, we can start playing that into uh, um, into that somehow. But we'll, yeah, I think it'd be good. I mean, because um, at the end of the day, this is something, again, it's public record. Um, so my whole purpose is to, uh, by doing this, is to, uh, to allow everyone uh, opportunity to see just how well our SIMP, which is the Comprehensive Emergency Management Plan for the city, how effective it is, and that will actually show that um, in, in real time. So we'll work on that. Thank you. Are there any more questions of the commission of Chief Swan? No, I just hope you don't volunteer me for anything else. <laughs> just joking. Are there any more questions of... Uh, Ms. Loney? Yeah. Just so that, sorry, just for clarification and make sure we're getting everything that you guys are wanting to see. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm anticipating that we're not gonna have a full timeline 
just because of the deadline that we've presented to some of the agencies and everybody still has their own other responsibilities going on. And hearing the suggestion to match up the timeline kind of with the video, uh, we wanna make sure that you get what you need. It might be better to push that back or we will present you with what we have in May, but it might not be comprehensive of all the agencies that responded. And to keep in mind that certain pieces of equipment or what have you aren't equipped with video cameras. So the video that we will be able to get our hands on are gonna be those that were filmed by the public or those that may have been in buildings that were affected. Also PD that had body cams and things of that nature. But that would require us to reach out to those agencies to get that video from them because from our agency, we don't have that video that's gonna show you a pretty picture, like a movie of what happened and in real time. So I wanna be clear about what you want so that we can make sure that we present that. Um, because if we are going on the timeline that we've presented already, it's gonna be a, a, a fairly broad timeline that we're gonna be able to present with the short deadline that we've given these agencies. I would say that if you present to us what you can, just be diligent and present to us what you can and I suspect that uh, I, I suspect that at, at some point in time we're going to be glad that we got as much information as we did because we'll have a deluge in two or three months down the road. For sure. Sure. So present everything that you can. Got Mr. It. Chairman, if I could, I was just thinking, like, tell us what what you know, right, about what happened. We yeah. all we all read various news accounts. What you know, walked around, talked to people, but like, what what damage was done? Well, and I'll tell you, what I was going to say, uh, and I was talking to Joseph as well, uh, uh, Pleasant, you know, which he comes from the background of news media. Uh, the, the question and, and, and the request of, that you want us to present, and we can do the best we can at this point, but it is sort of early. And the mindset here is, is that at the end of this uh, junction, we will probably have that and it'll probably be a better format because you'll have time enough to have all of that put put together, the timeline, the, the event, uh, the, the, because even before we can get a lot of the footage other than what uh, Kendra had just the, the shared with you guys, hopefully at the end of this junction, we will have that actual the the play by play of how from the news media to because they're going to be a big resource for us and I know a lot of that stuff had to be you know it takes uh, a little bit more than just asking but we we will work our we will make sure we do our part to make we'll present to you what we can in May but the, at the end of this though I think that would be a beautiful format uh, nice and sealed up at the end of the day to actually have everything laid out so we'll do our part and then maybe what from what I'm hearing um, I will have maybe a couple guest speakers I think from our office that can come in and maybe because they were there from the beginning and sort of lay out what they seen and how they seen it and just keep in mind again it'll be from their perspective but it'll be the overall view and it'll sort of get into what we're going to be doing anyway with each agency if you do request that so i probably can do that i've got a couple of people in, my, in, in mind now that will be able to probably tell you from the time the event started that morning uh, with the possibilities of you know, what that could have been uh, to the end date. I'll have that and um, have them here to give you a quick depiction of it. Is that, is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, any other questions? There being none, any, any unfinished business? We've already covered the new business. Congratulations to the recording secretary and to the vice chairman, uh, and thank you all, and I want to specifically say thank you to uh, Cindy Gross, our lawyer, for her hard work and her good counsel to us. We appreciate you. Have we covered all our bases? Have we dotted all our I's? Have we crossed our T all our T's with the Open Meetings Act? Yes, you did. You did a wonderful job. Hey, she gave, she, she gave a straightforward answer. I love that from a lawyer, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. We stand adjourned until 10 o'clock a.m. Central Time on Tuesday, May the 25th, 2021. Thank you very much. We'll be in this room. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate you.
This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.